Well, welcome back. When I was making another video, I, I just thought maybe I'd use the opportunity now to go into another subject, which is that of how to stabilise a system that's unstable. Of course, you read in textbooks all the time, the system is unstable, or, you know, what does it really mean? What does it look like? How do we fix it? Uh, it's all very well to say the poles lie in the left half plane or on the geomega axis, but in practice, what is actually happening? Well, you don't always have to sit down and do board plots and things, although it actually is a very important subject. But often you can kind of, if you've got the available hardware, you can almost solve the problem in your head. If you just got a straight oscillation, that's probably the easiest thing to fix. Why don't you get the gain right as well? Here's the system, or again, this is the, the um, bicycle motor um, with feedback around it and inertia. And uh, I'm going to just put ordinary feedback around it with no kind of um, uh, integration, nothing. It's just ordinary proportional gain. And there it goes. You see, it's got quite a lot of oscillation as it is. It's not completely unstable. You can see that's very highly undamped. If I just record this, and then look at it, you can see it's got classical overshoot with oscillations. So how to fix it? Well, what I'd want to do is probably find what that frequency of oscillation is first. So the way to do that is to turn off the input and just let it oscillate on its own, because an oscillator will oscillate with no input. In fact, that's the whole idea. It doesn't need an input to oscillate, though often it needs an input just to get it going. So here's my input. Let's just move it a bit. And you see it's actually not too bad there. But so what I'm going to do is increase the gain a bit so that it certainly will start oscillating. There it goes. Now I'm going to record it. And here we go. So there's a lovely oscillation. It's slightly biased and uh, that's because I didn't set the um, set start it from zero. But because I've got a built-in spectrum analyzer, uh, I can read exactly that the frequency of oscillation is 25 hertz. See that? That's kind of handy. Now I'm not suggesting you just happen to have a spectrum analyzer available all the time, but if you've got an oscilloscope, you might have that. Of course, it's more difficult with analog, with the digital systems. You have to get an output first. Here, it's all done within the LabVIEW software, so I can. Do it relatively easily. Uh, I'll just measure it one more time just to emphasize that. So let's start it again and I'll zero it this time and then start it. There it goes. Now it's gone off but taking about 18 amps. That's a classic oscillation. We'd say that was unstable even though it's a sustained oscillation. Let's record it. Stop. And there it is. It's it's actually a really nice linear looking os os uh, uh, waveform, um, sinusoidal waveform at 25 hertz. So how do we fix an oscillation at 25 hertz? Whether it be analog or digital, the the process is exactly the same. By that I mean whether it's a, a analog servo or a digital servo. Here over here from my book. I've got a little bit on uh, phase advances. So the phase advance is the key. Uh, I'm just going to look at its transfer function here. Of course, it's got a circuit diagram as well for analog, but we're not actually implementing the, um, the analog version. We're implementing the digital version. And you see in most textbooks, the phase advance is 1 plus ST1 over 1 plus ST2. T1 and T2 are time constants, and T1 is always greater than T2. If you make it the other way around, T1 is less than T2, then you get a phase lag compensator. You don't want that. You want phase lead, for the reasons I'll show in a minute. Uh, and there's a few things about this. The ratio T1 over T2, we usually make about 10 to 1, for the reasons we'll see in a minute. Um, if we draw the board plot, uh, the magnitude does this, it sort of goes goes along flat at 0 dB, that's unity gain, then it goes up at 20 dB per decade, and then flat again um, 
at this frequency here, 1 upon t2, 1 upon t1, it goes up and then it flattens off again. The ratio from 1 upon t2 to 1 upon t1 I call the span ratio. It wasn't my idea, it came from somebody I knew in industry. And if you plot the phase, you get something like this. There's nice positive going phase, and this is what we need to stop the oscillation. If you, if you know your board plots, you can know that the uh, sustained oscillation is caused by zero phase margin or negative phase margin. So when you pop this in at the right frequency, then you, you magically will have a phase margin of phi max. Now what is the phi max? Well, phi max um, is related to the span ratio. It turns out to be, uh, what is it, um, arc sine of the span ratio minus one over the span ratio plus one. Um, don't know if I've got it here. It's in another bit of the book. Uh, but anyway, for uh, for this ratio 10 to 1, if that's 10 times that frequency, then you get a phase maximum phase here, a bulge of the phase going up to about 56 degrees, 55 point something, 56 degrees, and that makes a decent phase margin. So all we need to do is design a phase advance with the center frequency here. That's the frequency where you get the maximum phase, and that's the clear. That's the the key frequency in a phase advance. Make it at, uh, I think we measured the, um, the, fre the frequency at 24 hertz, I think. We can do it again if need be. So we make this 24 hertz. That gives us this frequency and that frequency. That's very easy to do without going into the details. And then once we've got that, we've got the time constants, and then we've got the transfer function, and it's very simple to do then. Uh, now I've, I've written our program, of course, in LabVIEW. Um, which uh, does phase advance. Uh, here it is here. It's in a sub, so I don't have to... Always good practice to have subs. I've done it kind of an old-fashioned way. It's more like sequential old-fashioned text coding here, but um, these are the equations for the phase advance. Um, it's more like a MATLAB program, really, isn't it, than a LabVIEW program, but I could have done it um, with block diagrams if I really wanted to, but in this particular case I did it this way. It's called a formula node. I stuck all the values into that and uh, what we're going to do is now run it again, let it oscillate, and I haven't changed anything, and we're going to flick, flip in the phase advance, uh, which what I've done is I've made the phase advance so I can take it out and put it back in again, as you see here. It's, it's there, it's not there, now it's here, like magic. And uh, again, that's another thing it's hard to do if uh, you've got a real-time program, um, you know, in a micro, so it's, it's much easier to do in these kind of things for teaching purposes. So let's run it again, and um, I'll put it on record. And uh, what's it doing? Oh, the power supply's tripped out for some reason, so just re restart that. I'm just, um, I don't know why, but occasionally the power supply just sort of gives up. So that should get us going. Stop that. Okay, so that is still oscillatory. So um, if I now, and it's, if I now um, let it go and oscillate, let's put the um, step in and I put the phase advance in, bang, it stopped. I'll put it on record. Oh, there it is. The red is the input and the white is the output. It's a very nicely damp response. Um, the input being there, you see that there is a steady state error. Which you would expect because there's n there's no I haven't used a PID controller I've just used a um, proportional uh, derivative type controller. The derivative term always gives stability, but it's beautifully damped. I think you'll agree. Um, let's have a little bit more look at it running. We'll, we'll run it without the square wave going in. But, oh. Why isn't it going? Oh, it's not. There we go. It's not switched on. So that's it with, with the square wave. 
nice damp response. Let's turn the square wave off down here. Now I've got control of it with my um, this thing here. And you can see it's pretty well damped, isn't it? If I try and move it, well, it hasn't got enormous gain. I can still move it, but I can turn the gain up actually. Let's turn the proportional gain up, but now it's a little bit better. Still, I can move it, but uh, so it's not quite as good as I'd want it to be. And the way to improve on that, well, there's a couple of things I could do. Let's just move the gain even further if I can get away with it. Uh, try that first of all. So I'll increase the gain to something huge. And if you can get away with this, it's, it's you can, but it's not always a great idea because you end up doing something else that you shouldn't be doing. So let's let's up the gain. Oh, you see. Now that's much better. I can feel that doesn't move at all now. It's an enormous gain, but it's beginning to oscillate at another frequency higher up now. Hear that? Now let's zero this. Get it oscillating again and we'll see if we can measure it. Record. Stop. Oh, there it is. Ah, well, it's not so easy to measure this time because it's got all sorts of harmonics and things on it, really. Um, so that's not a, a, a neat kind of oscillation like the last one was. It's probably some kind of vibration at high frequencies. Um, but you want to avoid that if you can. Um, so you'd like to make the gain infinite if you could, you can, but it's not going to be always uh, possible, obviously. Let's run it again. Turn it, turn the gain down. There. So that's not too bad. That's a sensible kind of value. I've got the gain set for about 500 now, with one phase advance. And let's just let's just put this uh, square wave back in again. See, so we see what the response is. Record it. Oops, shouldn't have done that. Ah, there it is. Now you'll see that. Um, okay, response is still a little bit slow in the in the edges there, but you see the city say errors all but gone away because I've whacked the gain up so high. The easiest way to get rid of steady state error is just to have the gain very, very high. But usually when we put the gain very, very high, we run into oscillations. Um, either the initial one that we had uh, in the experiment or the higher frequency one, which we ended up when I put it even higher. So uh, usually we put some kind of low-pass filter up at high frequencies to try and stop these high frequency oscillations if we, if we can. That's the structural resonances and things. They do, in fact, restrict our bandwidth. But anyway, that gives you a rough idea of how to um, stabilize a, a, an unstable system. You just use a phase advance, measure, measure the frequency it oscillates at, put the phase advance in at that frequency. So it's not a P plus D controller. This is um, uh, just a phase advance on its own, really, with a gain. There's no extra integral action or anything like that. Thank you very much.